perfect. It is 6.30. We are going to call the April 20th, 2023 commission meeting to order. Uh, roll call. Brooks. Here. Chuck. Present. Brian. Present. Thomas. Present. Alyssa. Here. Rob. Here. We have quorum. Item number three, approval of agenda. Hold on just a second. The, the mayor and staff has a item to add at the end, just a recognition. Item number lucky 13, <laughs> recognition. We must have won an award or something. Yeah. I would guess. Now, go ahead. Would you like to make a, uh, I make a motion that we approve, approve the agenda? agenda. Motion is second to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four, approval of minutes of the April 6, 2023 meeting. I have a question. Top of page four. Can we get your microphone? Yep. On the top of page four, it says James Roby. Is that correct? R O capital B Y? We can note it, and I guess the way we'd have to do it is probably look up county record for property ownership, and we'll make sure the name matches. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. I have a couple of things. Oh. Um, um, in the... In the first paragraph about the home occupation permit application, um, it says here there will be no items for retail purchase, but I think it would be more accurate to say there will be, uh, I mean, he was asking to, to sell things for retail purchase, but he said he would not keep an inventory on site. And I, I think it would be more accurate to somehow state that, that he would not have an an inventory on site. Also, at the end of that topic, um, when we denied the application, I would like to include the reason we denied it, which was that we um, there's a in our ordinances there's a place that says no retail sales out of houses unless it's incidental like shampoo shampoo for a hairdresser but we we denied it because of the retail aspect uh patrick do we normally specify why we approved or deny things or we just make a motion that we approved or deny them um the motion's what in, what's important but if you want to specify why you can the section Alyssa ref is referring to is section, since the numbers in the ordinances have changed since the NB district is effective, now the numbers are slightly shifted. So now home occupations is 1515-11. The section she's referring to is 1515-11G that says, unless expressly permitted by a conditional use permit, no retail sales are permitted from the site other than incidental sales related to services provided. You know, that wasn't part of my motion, Alyssa. My motion was just to deny. And I think prior to that, both Brian and I had stated we thought it was going to be more retail sales, but my motion didn't include that. Okay, Understood. so if you wanted to include that in the discussion portion of the minutes, the, but the, uh, as far as the motion, it can just stand as motion to deny, I think. Understand. Yeah, I guess I would agree. It, it might be good to have it in the minutes for past record, but I so I agree with Alicia that it was, you know, it was part of the discussion. But I also yep. agree with Chuck; it was not part of the right. motion. Right. Okay, so thanks for can, that. Thanks for that clarification. That way, yeah. I don't want later people to say, "Well, if you go in and complain, then you can make them change their minds." Right. Yeah. Anything else? No. So you got that? It's awesome. Okay. 
Now, would you like to make a motion? I'll move to approve the minutes with those modifications. No, I'll second it. Motion and second to approve the minutes with a few modifications. Um, they are important because Chuck's got a copy of minutes from 1962 when he started <laughs> on this board. And, uh, they were engraved in stone? Well, <laughs> they put them on paper, but they took and rubbed them off. And the, but, yeah. <laughs> a mimeograph <laughs> copy. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, item number five, public comment. Alyssa, can you shut your mic off, please? Anyone who would like to address the commission may do so now. If you just state your name and address for the record, that would be wonderful. Steve Reed, 1107. It's been a long time, right? For so, me. Pardon? For me, it has been. For I you, it has been, yes. Meeting. But for everybody else that was here two weeks ago, two weeks okay. ago. <laughs> So I was actually coming here tonight to clarify the reasoning for the denial. So it sounds like it was purely um, denied because of the retail aspect, which is one of like four services or one of four items that I was going to offer. Is, would that be accurate? I I, so. Tim, I know that you can't speak because you weren't here, but am, am I under the... Pardon? Can we get microphones? Yes, <laughs> microphones, please. Okay, say... So, so hi hydrographics, or yeah, hydro-dipping. That's a dipping. Yep, Cerakote, which is the spray application, spray which your neighbor does. Yep. Um, he does dipping, too. Yep, that's what I meant. And uh, just simply transfer of firearms from yeah. an FF... Uh, wherever they come from, whether it be an FFL, actually it would be another FFL dealer to someone, yep. and I would just process that transfer. And then if anybody would reach out to me to inquire about a purchase of a firearm. So total of four different things. But my understanding, though, is it's just strictly based on the sale of the firearms. Is that accurate? Getting at least three head nods? I would, I would agree, yes. Okay. Steve, I will, I will go on the record. Um, as you know, I'm a proponent of the Second Amendment. I'm yep. a proponent of the FFL thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I specifically asked you to walk through your process, and you said they were writing you a check for the firearms, which in my mind is retail. Okay. And I don't know, at least for me personally, I can't speak for the rest of the people on this board. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we want to open the door to home occupations which retire, which entail retail. Okay. Because what happens, as you know, and, and you did it, um, people will say, well, you let person X do that, and so I should have the right to do that as well. And mm -hmm. so I personally do not want to op open the door to home-based retail businesses. Okay. So, so I hope that explains my position. I can't, I can't explain the position for everybody else, but... I appreciate your honesty as well as willingness to go on record. I do. Thank you. Um, that comes to my next comment, whatever you want to say. Um, would you guys say that jewelry sales is retail? Or fireworks accessories is retail? Like selling fireworks accessory accessories? Or uh, maybe jewel, uh, excuse me, like furniture? Would you consider all that stuff to be retail? Right. There are you, are, are you referencing businesses that have conditional uses in the city of Brandon? I don't know if they have conditional use permits, but I do, do know that they have addresses in the city limits, and they are based out of residential homes. So there's four that are doing this right now that I'm aware of, with a fifth one being exactly, or I shouldn't say exactly, but extremely close to what I want to do which is the, the neighbor to you. Uh, on, on my Maureen, mm -hmm. on Maureen yep, Drive. Yep, yeah. on Maureen. That was like a year and a half-ish ago. Mm. It was about there. But my point is, though, that there are five existing that I'm aware of that are selling items from their home. I don't understand why I'm being denied. Again, we would have to go and see if those people all have 
conditional uses that were actually passed by the city. Okay. I know the now, one. Now, you, you can ahead. certainly, I mean, there's lots of people who start businesses in their homes that mm -hmm. don't understand that they're supposed to get a conditional use permit before yep. they do it. Yeah. Agreed. If you go on Google Maps, there are all kinds of places in the city mm -hmm. that are operating as businesses. That's, a, that's exactly now, what I did. Are, are they? I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea if they're operating as businesses. They haven't come before us to get a conditional use. Uh, the one on Marine, I know, did. Yeah. Because we talked about it two weeks ago. If I remember correctly, he was bringing things in and shipping things out. Okay. If you look at website, it I shouldn't say website, but Facebook, it shows that he is available for firearms and ammunition as well. From what I recall, when he came in here, he was getting... I think I was, I don't remember how long ago that was, but I think I remember correctly, he was bringing stuff in and shipping things out. He wasn't doing retail sales. At least that's what he told us. Okay. So I, I was on this board at that time that that applicant came in, and my recollection is it was just the coding that he had the FFL because he was his coding included firearms. Yep. He was coding other items, but he had the, F, the FFL because it also included firearms. Mm -hmm. So I think as Tim mentioned, you know, we're not a policing board. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming in to do it the right way. Um, you know, there may be other businesses in town, whether it's daycares, whether it's sales, whether it's service oriented, that are operating without coming here first. Um, but we are not a policing entity. We're simply a, a review committee. So, like I said, I appreciate you coming in to do it the right way. Um, it's not up to us to, to decide or police if others within the town are doing it without coming here first. So, okay. Okay? Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else? I just... Say something, Tim, please. Oh, Chuck. <laughs> um, I just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge, as Tim said, this is my last meeting. He embellished a bit. My first meeting was May 20th, 1999. <clears throat> Are you sure? Uh, yeah, that's no. what it says here. And uh, Alyssa was on the board with me then. And yes. we uh, approved one variance, which back in the day we approved every variance that came in. We approved some plats. We approved a building permit. And then talked about parking pads. Parking pads? Yeah, parking pads. Drainage mostly, I think. Yeah, it was something to do with that. Yeah. So. But I wanted to thank everybody on the board here. I enjoyed serving with you. I wanted to thank the staff, Tammy, Paul, uh, Patrick, Brian, uh, everybody. I just appreciate all the help you guys have been, Melissa. So thank you all. That's it. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Droning on and on, Chuck. Anybody else have anything? No? Can you turn your mic off, please, Alyssa? I'm sorry. All right, item number six, rezoning application 600 North Pask Flower Trail. TNT development. Come on up. TNC, I'm sorry. I added a different letter on there. It's TNC. TJ. Yes, sir. Uh, TJ Barthman, 1016 South Nicholas Avenue. Um, so, yeah, this lot is a lot that we had come uh, in front of you guys before on uh, last year of September 1st. Uh, so it's been a while. At that time, it was approved to be moved to general, rezoned to general business. Um, a few days later, on September 6th of last year, we went to the City Council uh, with your approval. Um, at that time, uh, we were asked to, we would uh, come back and work with uh, the neighbors and the P&Z Commission to create a new district, uh, neighborhood business, um, which we um, spent time going over. We spent time with you guys. The neighbors had the opportunity to as well to participate um, in that. Um, it's basically the neighborhood business is a toned down version of general business. As you guys know, we've put a lot of restrictions on it um, to differentiate between the two. 
so then it was on September 15th, which is just a little over seven months ago. Um, we met with you guys working diligently with that um, and came up with the new neighborhood business district, which has now been through planning and zoning. Uh, it's done its two readings at city council and um, that is all approved. So we are asking that this lot is now to the new district neighborhood business district. Okay. Questions for me. Anybody have any questions for TJ? You're accepting it. The new business district is what you're saying. You want us to? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, so we're coming back through the process. Um, to yeah. To rezone. So um, again, you guys approved it already once for general business, but um, since we were asked to come back and create the neighborhood business district, we now have to go back through the process of being approved here tonight for neighborhood business then we'll go back through council with that yes um the neighborhood business district is on the books it's ready to use correct it became effective two days ago okay anybody else have any questions for tj what does tnc stand for town wow. and country <laughs> town and country Were you expecting something else? Not real creative, but it's the best we got. <laughs> I mean, it works. It's fine. Okay. Hard, hard to remember random letters. Yeah, that's all it is. Remember if you know what they stand for. Yep, that's okay. So, if anybody, does anybody else have any questions for DJ, TJ specifically? No, not for him. Um, do we have to allow this to go before the people before we. Yes. Okay. We're getting there. Okay. First things first. I turn your mic off. Yes, sir. Did you have something? Just a comment. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. Good. Anybody else? Now, for those of you who don't know, this neighborhood business district is a new district that the city council um, had sort of directed the planning and zoning commission to come up with. We did spend about six months. I do recognize a lot of faces in here from all of those meetings. Um, Anybody else would like to talk on this? You're welcome to do it now. Hi, Shauna Shepard, 601 Tamarack. Um, I'd like to thank you all for, for all of your hard work, you, Chuck, and everything. Um, you know, we all worked through this f six months worth of, of work um, to get this new zone. Um, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure that it's really going to be a good fit for the neighborhood. I mean, we're still looking at three strip malls and, um, you know, 24-hour businesses and, and, you know, a lot of traffic. Um, you know, one situation, you know, that I th had come across is, you know, I was leaving my gym at night at 8 o'clock at night and dogs were barking. So what's gonna happen at 3 a.m. when people leave the gym? Just leaving the gym. I wasn't saying anything, I didn't have anything to say, but now you're setting off all the neighborhood dogs. So who gets in trouble? The homeowner for having a dog at their residence. Um, you know, and daycares, you know, by nature, they have loud screaming kids that would make it challenging to do Zoom meetings. I know when I'm trying to work at home, just to hit, you know, having all the construction back there, I had to leave. Like, it was bad. So imagine having kids out there day after day screaming for hours, setting off the neighbor's dogs. You know, I, I, it, it would be very difficult. Um, you know, th toys getting thrown over the fence and just general garbage. Um, it's not a super great place for a daycare because it's so close to a truck route, you know, Truck drivers have huge blind spots, and um, they can't see small, unpredictable children. Same with, you know, buses. If you have, you know, the bus route, their buses aren't going to be going through that development, so they have to stop on Redwood to pick up kids. Um, this neighborhood's a great neighborhood. Um, we have something more valuable than a one-time payout, and that's Harmony. We shovel each other's driveways. We stop and talk to each other. All summer long, it's neighbor season. It's full on, you know, 
hanging out with each other. Um, why would we want to experiment with that healthy environment? I don't. I wouldn't want to risk risk squandering that friendly environment to, you know, for the developers to make money. That's you know, um, it's kind of a slippery slope. If if everyone that buys a business in Brandon, are they entitled to make a profit as fast as they expect? Is that you know kind of where we're going? Um, it's not a super great location for businesses. You leave Casey's and you go past a mile of residential and swamp land, past the trailer house, across from the trucking company with a dirt lot, you know, it, this new bus business could work. We worked on it for six months. I think it, I think it could, but it probably should be drawn into the development. Um, I feel like I feel like it's a bait and switch. Like, you know, people are moving there. We think it's going to be houses, and now it's a development with three strip malls. And you know, it's kind of one of those things that disenfranchises people against this brand. And we have so many people that work so hard to brand the city in a positive way, and then we have these judgments that that make it difficult to be proud of the city of Brandon some citizens are feeling oppressed because we're not being heard and supported. We've, this neighbors, we've been coming to these meetings for years now. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Riley Walls, 609 North Tamarack Avenue. Um, Patrick, could we pull up the the site again? Um, I just had a couple of questions for TNC, actually. Um, I know that in previous meetings there have been, you know, kind of drawings or plans to parcel this thing up. I was wondering if that was still going to be the plan. Is that is that going to be further down the road to parcel it up into three different lots? We have. Or are you just rezoning the whole lot right now? So this is a rezone application. They'll yeah. have to present a preliminary plan, if I'm correct, when they go to develop it. When they go to development, they present a preliminary plan? Okay. Just in the past, you know, they've presented a preliminary plan. I think that would just give a lot of people more ease on what's going to go there. So. They put down an unofficial map that didn't mean anything. Exactly. I understand yeah. that. I work in architecture, so I yeah. mean, I, I know how that works, too. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I just, I didn't know if you had any sort of plan or idea or anybody lined up that might go there just so that you could give the public a little bit of insight just so that we know what potentially could go there so people may feel more comfortable. Um, that's all the questions I had. So if it's just rezoning, I mean, keep that in line as yep. well. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? All right. Anybody up here have any input, anything to say? Any questions, comments? Brian? Mr. Chairman, I just have a couple Mr. of comments for the record. Um, so just to remind everybody present here tonight that this parcel is identified in the comprehensive plan that was adopted by the city of Brandon back in 2014 actually December 15th 2014 that this was to be a commercial development parcel I just want to remind everybody that that was the understanding going into either purchasing homes or developing properties or whatnot um, after that date um, okay and I think this board as well as the community has done and spent a considerable amount of time addressing what is appropriate type of commercial for this parcel and uh, I, I, I think we've done our due diligence to make this the appropriate use for that parcel of land Okay. And just to add to that a little bit, the you know we've talked about 
I know the seed of this discussion we had to create this zone came from a previous action on this particular piece of land, but I just want to also say that, you know, this, this zone was not designed solely for this piece of land. We are talking about it again in conjunction with this, but we took a lot of care to try to design something that would be applicable throughout the city as we grow into the future, so. And we already had another developer request it, so that's pretty good. Anybody else have any questions or comments? If not, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion to approve it, I would assume. Motion and a second to approve the rezone. What's that? It's a motion to recommend to City Council. Yep. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, conditional use application for 1316 East Martin Place. Um, let me get to the page here. This is, looks like is for Heartland Appliance. Is there anybody here from there? Hello. If you could just state your name and address for the record, that would be fantastic. And then let us know what you would like to do. My name is Rob Van Egnum, um, owner of Heartland Appliance and Repair. Address is 1316 East Marshall Place, Brandon, South Dakota. Okay. We're looking to uh, not have to have four extra parking spots and then to have two drive-ins or exits to the location. Okay. So, Patrick, question for you. Yep. We allow one entrance or we allow a total footage of entrance? It is one driveway per street frontage. Our understanding was the application is for the second driveway, whichever one is considered the second one by a conditional use permit. Okay. Regarding parking spaces, that would require a variance, and this is not a variance hearing. So we're just talking about the driveways right now? Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, anybody have any questions? We're getting there. We'll get there. Okay. We're getting there. I have a process. <laughs> so um, what is your need for the second driveway? Our fear is if anything happened to the semi truck or truck that shows up, if it breaks down, uh, if it's unloading for an hour, our concern is if we only have one drive in or entrance, that would block any customer, any employee, uh, emergency vehicle from getting into our location. That's our that's our fears. If a if a truck could be there for an hour or two unloading, what happens if you know it breaks down or it's sitting there for an extended period of time? Are you familiar with uh, McDonald's over on Split Rock? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's like three businesses there. They all use one driveway for McDonald's, for the gas station, and for what was a restaurant. I'm trying to figure out why you need it more than they do. It's the the driveway on the picture there on the right side. That's where the loading dock is. And so that's where the truck would sit right in that area. And that would be our main one um, for trucks to get in. And how long have you had this business? Uh, we started in 2014 in George, Iowa. And I mean, then here. we, yeah. 2014 in George, Iowa. In here, though. Oh, we haven't started. Oh, it's no. no this is a new construction. Okay. You good? Anybody else have any questions for the applicant? No. Anybody else have any comments or anything they'd like to add? Mm -hmm. 
Um, what is the total uh, width of a driveway that we allow? 60 feet in a general business. 60 feet in a general business. So the two driveways have less than what we allow? No. They don't? 39 plus 24. Okay, so I went to USD and my math skills aren't very great, but... <laughs> Chuck, you went there before it was a college. Still an academy. Almost. We, so they almost have what we allow for, for footage. And we don't know what businesses are going to go next to this business. There might be an opportunity in the future for a shared driveway, but there's no way to know at this time, right? Right. Because aren't we trying to promote shared driveways and shared parking in this whole area? We have the options for that. We recently adopted the shared and cooperative parking. The problem they run into is being first, there's no one to share or cooperate with. Yep. So hopefully that comes into play <clears throat> later on in terms of parking spaces just because our goal is not to create a sea of parking that's half full. It's to have a good use of the space. But yes, our, our goal is to use the space well. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts on this? Any questions? How soon did you want to start building? We were hoping to start the beginning of May. It, 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 the two, the entrance and the exit or the two entrances would just be the same as if you did a a Jimmy John's or a Dairy Queen or you know they're they're gonna have two in that location as well so that'd be you know one thing to consider down the road that then those businesses would only be able to have one as well yes sir so mr. chairman I got several concerns with this application number one the total width on the one frontage exceeds what we allow okay. for the ordinance. You're it's better at math, any, obviously, than I am. <laughs> I didn't go to USD, sorry. Ah. Um, <laughs> it exceeds the 60-foot width requirement. We've done some variances where we've allowed that, but they have not exceeded the 60-foot width on a single frontage. Uh, number two, um, based on what I'm seeing here, I don't see... One of the reasons that we have this ordinance, just for the people in the audience here, is the city needs a place to put snow when they plow. And obviously this is not a public street, no. so the city's not plowing it, but the entity that does get hired by this group of, enti group of landowners is gonna need a place to put snow. And I don't see anywhere on this parcel, even for the individual applicant, where they're gonna put their snow. And plus the snow that's on the on the driveway on the street. Um, third is what I'm seeing from the design of this. They're looking to use the public access as a backup for their utility vehicles for deliveries. And I've mentioned this on several meetings in the past. I'm opposed to this of uh, using either public streets or public accesses to back up semi-trucks and delivery vehicles um, from a safety standpoint because of potential road blockages for vehicles driving as well as pedestrians so those are my comments okay yeah uh, in this design uh, through JSA they have a they have it set up so the truck pulls into the parking lot and has enough room to back in and out so they I'm sorry, you mentioned earlier you were concerned about a truck parked there breaking down, blocking traffic, and now you're saying you have enough room for a truck to I'm, I'm just saying and be parked there and broken down? That That's conflicting, sorry. No, what I'm saying is, is if the truck was lined from north to south in our parking lot, like if that truck broke down there or was there for an extended period of time, it would block that 
exit and entrance to our building. What what you were saying, and, and let me know if I was wrong, that you didn't want the truck backing up on the public road or the roadway, right? Correct. So I, I, I'm not an engineer, but J, JSA set this up so the truck could back in to that spot. But when it leaves, you know, it's obviously going to go out onto the road. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not seeing the maneuvering clearances here to justify that comment that they are doing their maneuvering within your property. So, sorry. Yeah, that's just what they told, that, that's what I, I'm relying on is JSA. So I will be willing to continue this if they provide truck maneuvering okay. clearances at a future date. But until I see that, I'll, I'll be opposed to this. So are you? So I would have to bring JSA here, and they could—they're the ones that set this up. Is—is is that, is that what I need? You know, if it, I, I can only speak for myself until okay. we come to a vote. But yes, yeah, I, okay. I'm not seeing your your turning movements on your drawing here to justify what you're saying because earlier you said if a truck breaks down, it's going to block access for your your retail customers. Right. So that's that's conflicting. I just meant if it broke. What what I was trying to say is if the truck broke down like this, as it's parked in our parking lot, not like this. I I understand that, but if okay. your truck is broke down parked there, it takes a lot more movement and more space to maneuver a truck to back in within your property than it takes to just simply park it. Okay. To drive a truck in, get the the trailer backed up and back it in without blocking or infringing on um, public right away. Sorry, this isn't public right away. This is a private road. Uh, this is a access easement. So to me, that's a safety hazard okay. when you're doing backward truck movements over a, a access easement. So just my personal opinion, I can't speak for the rest of this group until we until we vote. Okay. Yes, Daryl. Daryl Virick, 7321 West uh, 65th Street, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm the developer for this property. And um, this property, you're going to see this a bunch of times. Well, you see what IV brings in as far as their access and driveways and everything. Plus our strip malls and our fast foods. And this is two-lane traffic, and it's destination traffic. There's no throw of traffic. You're not ever blocking anybody, but for a few minutes. So the traffic that goes through there has an extra lane to get around. And like I said, this is all destination traffic. There isn't, it isn't like Redwood or uh, Split Rock where you got cars going by all the time. And we, we've got Jimmy John's, we've got strip malls being drawn. Everybody wants a double drive through fast food, Culver's, um, and I won't mention the others right now, but yeah, this is kind of why we did it this way, was to uh, make sure the traffic is cohesive going around the track and that uh, you can keep going. And like I said, it's destination traffic, I mean, if he gets a couple few hundred cars a day going past him, um, I don't see it's going to be a, lot, a whole lot more than that. Maybe a thousand, which is what, 10 or uh, 60 an hour or whatever. So, I mean, I don't see any issue here whatsoever as far as the accesses. And you're going to be looking at this a whole bunch more shortly. So when we wrote the ordinance for general business allowing for one driveway per front street frontage, um, what was the reasoning behind that? We would have to go back and listen to the tapes and this. Okay. My okay. recollection, one of the issues was snow removal and where that, where the city is going to place that snow. Snow is going back by the lake. Excuse okay. me for interrupting. Okay. 
Okay. That was one issue. And that's okay. the regional drainage pond for everybody yep. in that development, so nobody has to put a BMP on their property, so it's 100% usable. Excuse me, I have gone on the record. Yep. I don't care what district it is. I don't believe that city streets, and in this case, a mutual access agreement should be used as a maneuvering space for delivery vehicles. Yep. Whether that's driving forward, but especially to be backing up. Yes. Wasn't another reason for one access per street to to maintain traffic flow so that people going in and out at the same time making um, other people it, stop and slow down yes and and i believe that we came up with the shared parking idea to try and eliminate driveways and add for shared parking and access through properties if i remember correctly yes the only problem with this property is that we don't have another property to share a driveway with currently correct yeah i do have one question for city administration um so i heard a comment tonight that snow is going to be placed in the detention pond to the west or sorry to the east is that detention area city property is it intended no. to become city property is that it is not no. No, nope. it's going to be part of their HOA. Okay. As part of the association. Okay, so I'm hearing some conflicting information tonight regarding some future topics on tonight's agenda about BMPs. So can you fill me in? Is that pond part of the BMP for this development? And is that private or public? This BMP that we're talking about is going to stay a private one. Okay. So they have their HOA or their association all set up to maintain it and take care of it. Okay. My, my concern with the comment about snow removal is I know there's an issue with snow removal and placement of snow off of property. And it cannot go within city property. So I can't put my snow and pile it up on a street right away or a street BM, city BMP or anything like that. So I'm hearing tonight that their intention is they're going to haul the snow to the east and place it there. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And is that acceptable to the city? I'm looking at the regulations for what can be placed in the BMP. Okay. I'm not sure if they can place snow there or not. Okay. Thank you. We have two four bays on the detention pond to keep that pond clean so that every year we can just clean out the four bays instead of the pond. So what comes off of the snow pile will drain into the four bay before it goes into the pond. Okay. Anybody else up here have any questions or comments? Whereabouts on your on your parcel there is this building gonna go right near where it says addition mm -hmm. I think it's right up in here but you want me to point to it right here sure it's okay. Like I said, uh, I mean, IV, everybody's going to be backing semis up that need them. The hotel probably won't have to because if we get the second hotel, uh, either or in the event center, but uh, the semis, that I don't know what they're planning to, to put into the Hampton there. I don't think they're putting food in there. But the event center goes in in the second hotel, obviously, there'll be semi-traffic there. So I think what 
you know, when it when it comes to that, what Brian is talking about is if you since you brought up High V, um, the one that sits on 26 and Sycamore, you won't see a, a big semi truck stopping on 26th Street and backing into the High V parking lot. It would back in at the far. Um, no, 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 no. He, he would not. You would not see a truck stop on 26th Street and then back in to the High V parking lot. There is room on the property for the truck to pull in and then turn around on the property and back up to a door in this, high V. Yeah, but so what, what he is saying is that he would like to see that on this property you can pull a truck onto the property, <laughs> maneuver it into a loading area without putting it on the street. That's going to be pretty hard because these are tight spaces. I mean, high V is only building a 42,000 square foot store in there. And so... Um, and the strip malls that we're working on with the fast foods. Uh, I don't know what kind of uh, trucking that fast foods have. I'm guessing they're just using a smaller delivery truck for their stuff, but everybody uses semis nowadays yeah. to, del to uh, deliver stuff. And, and when they deliver them, they don't stop traffic to do so. Right. Even in Brandon, if you go to Casey's, but we they pull a truck in. Well, that's not the city's problem, sir. I'm sorry. The well, city's, I know it's not the city's no, I know problem, the city. But I'm, a, I don't want to argue with you, but it's, problem. but it's not the city's responsibility. It's everybody's problem. Whoa, 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 whoa. We all want the same thing. That's that, why I designed it the way I did and made sure the traffic flow and the snow and everything works out perfect on it. And backing up semis in there is probably a possibility. And I can't help that. That's up to you to prove it or disapprove that. But the user is what matters. And especially since these are private streets, no through streets and no traffic. The only traffic in there is destination traffic. Okay. Anybody else up here have any questions? Does the city staff have any questions or concerns? Just one point of clarification. On the exception for R3, C, V, G, V, L, I, H, I, I, N, driveway widths, each lot is allowed one driveway per street frontage. The width of each driveway shall not exceed 60 feet as measured at the inside of the sidewalk. Each additional driveway shall require a conditional use permit. So that's what that says. Okay. Anybody else up here have any other comments? Comments, concerns, otherwise I would entertain a motion. I will make a motion to deny the application. So I have a question. So if, oh, if hold on. There's sorry. a motion on the table. Okay. To deny the application. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Go ahead. So if JSA came in here and showed how a truck or had a visual or uh, uh, showing that the truck drives into our location and backs up within our location, that would settle what you're denying it for? No. I have two issues with the, the application. Number one is the use of public either right-of-way or public access easements to maneuver a delivery vehicle. That's no one issue. The second issue is it exceeds the 60 feet that we allow for access. So what was the first one? Can you clarify that so that I can write it? Using public right-of-way and or public access to maneuver delivery vehicles and you're saying because that's on city ground or because that would well in your in your case yeah I and I've opposed this if you go back in the yeah. record I've opposed I'm this. just trying to clarify in heavy yeah. industrial okay I it's a safety issue in my in my mind okay um, I don't think we should be allowing trucks to back up on public right away but if they're backing up in our yes ours were fine that, be, that becomes your issue yep okay if an accident happens on a city right away, it becomes a city issue. Okay? okay. It becomes our issue. 
If you have an accident on your property, that's your issue. Yep. Okay? So I, I need to protect the citizens of, of Brandon, okay? Yep. Whether they're coming to your business or Hy-Vee or whoever else is coming to your development, okay? That's, that's a Brandon issue. I need to protect those citizens, okay? The second so, but, issue is you're exceeding the total allowable width of a public access. So if we showed that this truck maneuvers and backs in no, on... The, the total width, we say 60 feet, you're right. exceeding 60 between the two points. On the I, I mentioned it earlier, I said we've allowed this with multiple points, but they've been less than the 60 feet. But if the truck backs up on our land, on our business no, no, land. That's that's my first. Issue. Yeah, I'm I'm going Second. back to number one. Okay. Yep. So if our yes. truck backs yes. up on our land and it's not backing up on the street to go Correct. back in, then it would be okay. Yes. For issue number one. For yeah, issue yeah. number one. And if if we can get that to sixty, then that'd be issue number two. Correct. Between okay. the two. Is yes. it wider than sixty? Yes. Sixty four and a half. So right. I would need JSA to come and show how they designed this with a truck backing it in our private property. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Go ahead. So we're at a dilemma. I don't know if the applicant wants to pull this. Because if we deny it, my understanding, they can't come back for six months, correct? That Patrick? is correct. 15.22.5 says no applicant requesting a conditional use permit who includes the same or substantially the same requirements that has been denied by planning and zoning or a few appeals of the city council and they denied cannot be reconsidered before the expiration date of six months from the date of final action. So Patrick, what would happen if we were to table this issue to the next PNZ meeting? We'll ask Chuck to come back and sit in. <laughs> so if you tabled it, that would not be considered the yep. final action. The final that, action would be a yay or a nay. A tabling would not be a final action. So we, even though there's a motion and a second, we still have an opportunity to table this if we so choose. There is and a motion, so you would have to vote on the motion. And it has been seconded. Do we have to vote on it? Yes. It's, it's a motion that has been made and seconded. But we have to either vote yay or nay. If we vote yay and right, approve, six months. if we vote nay, they can't come back in six months. You can... I guess you withdraw your motion. That Sorry. would be up to you. So I would have to withdraw my motion? Man, we're digging way Correct. into the book now. I hate procedural issues. Well, you know, here we are. I'm trying to work with the applicant. Here. Um, Can so I withdraw? My kid's birthday is uh, You can't today. right now because it's, it's, not, <laughs> no, it's now sitting on our table. Not got yours. it. He can withdraw his motion, I think. He can withdraw his motion. And then we can table it, and we if can. If that's what you want to do, and we could wait till the next PNC meeting. He brings the engineer in. We get some of these issues figured out. Correct, and, and we've had that. You've had that discussion at City Council. Yeah. When you table something, do you want to specify a date where it will reappear? Okay. So then you would have to rescind his motion. Is that right? Cancel it. Say I don't. I just was a kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Something like that. Correct. So I would like to rescind my motion and table okay. this and give the applicant two weeks to revise their application. Um, our next planning and zoning meeting will be on May 4th. Okay. Is that correct? That is correct. So you would like to say that we were tabling this until May 4th? Yes. On May 4th? With the assumption you that come the applicant back. will show maneuvering clearances within yes. the property and to show a total width of less than 60 feet. Yep. Got it? Got it. So May 4th. This is, a, this is a new motion, right? Do we still have to act on this? No, I don't think I tables. Okay. I don't no. think you motion and second tables, do you? Like we're getting into the book. I think I you said. do. Yeah. Well, it's an action. Motion to pull it, right? Yep. Do I have to make another motion to table it? Motion to with, continue with the date. To table. Yep. Yes. Make a motion to table it with the date that you want it to be reheard. Two weeks. May 4th. May 4th. So you make a motion to table it until May 4th. Second. Yes. yes. And a second. second. Thank you. There we go. 
A motion and a second to table this till May 4th. Boy, that was really hard. All right. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So after all of that, come back on May 4th. See you Thank May 4th. You. Thank you. Wow. Last meeting, huh, Chuck? There we go. <laughs> Item number eight, the Institutional District Public Recreation Facility, page 32. All right, Patrick, help us out a little bit. So at the last meeting, we talked about these, and hopefully the, the language and the definition reflects what we talked about. And we, I'll have to talk to Melissa to make sure which date we have submitted to the paper as the public hearing. I think it's the first meeting in May, but it may be the, the second meeting in May, depending on when we got it to the paper and the 10 days notice and when it shows up and okay. based on when you submit it to them. But I just wanted to make sure for this item and the next that the definition is how you want it to be. Okay. The main thing there is the operated by a governmental or nonprofit. <clears throat> the last sentence basically. Yes. Okay. And before we had one of these with the public, comma public at the end, one did not. So I think that was that was what we wanted. And I guess in the future, if we ever had a need to consider a sports venue non-public, we could do that at that time. But this protects that language the, that it is by a nonprofit or a, yeah, I like that. Okay. Anybody else have any comments on this? Anybody out there have any comments on this? No? Okay. So now the next step is to publish this? I'm, I'm not hearing. sure where we are in the process. Melissa wasn't here today, so I couldn't confirm. But it will be at the public hearing will be scheduled for the next available okay. planning and zoning meeting. Perfect. Item number nine, institutional district, uh, public sports venue on page 33. I would assume this is similar. It is. The kind of the difference between the two is one is conduct of sports, leisure time activities, and other customary usual recreation activities. It can be disorganized, whereas this one is for your organized events and hosting of organized things. A little bit different. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about this for Patrick? This Patrick. is the one that was written based on our conversation with the Hockey Association. The Hockey Association's here if you have any comments. Tom Grunick, uh, 1901 South Archstone Circle, Sioux Falls. I'm the president of the Hockey Association. Uh, I would uh, approve this so we can move forward with our project. Okay, we're good with the language. You're good with the language. You understand what was written? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Um, so the next thing for this would also be to schedule a public hearing. Am I correct? Yep, and they may already be scheduled. I will have to discuss with Melissa where they are but they will for sure be heard in May so we will do a public hearing in Either front of this body and then there's a first and second reading in front of the City Council on May 4th or on well we don't know yet okay. I, I will checking. I will let you know okay but right. it kind of follows this that pattern the flow chart there we go yeah we're fancy okay any other questions no okay I think we're Good, on item number nine, item number 10, Institutional District Best Management Practice Facility, otherwise known as BMP. So Brian did submit some comments this afternoon. We had talked about this with City Administrator Brian and then PNZ member Brian. So we have a couple of comments. His was to 
make them allowable in both NRC and institutional based on the descriptions, the purpose description of the district and do something like a neighborhood BMP or a public BMP or a municipal BMP to differentiate them from a private BMP like you would have at Brandon 90 Plaza. And I think that works. So we'll incorporate that language and hopefully the next draft will reflect those comments. Okay. Anybody have anything on this? Have any questions? Shoot, man. Maybe just to comment on what Patrick already said. So um, I'd like to see this also added as an allowable use or conditional use, whether we decide to, whether whether we decide as a group whether this is an allowable use or a conditional use. I think it should be an allowable use, but um, I, I just think we should also add it to the NRC. You know, you look at areas like McCarty Park or places like that. Um, that this is a this is a good fit, and so as long as we're tackling it now. I'd like to see us go ahead and add it to the NRC as well, so that we don't have to have an, uh, a separate zone for a BMP that falls within an NRC. Just looking okay. ahead. Um, and then my other concern is to, I, I kind of mentioned this at our last meeting, that we can't group all BMPs as the same. There's some that are private, there's some that are public, and I think what we're talking about here are public ones whether that's a term we have to add, publicly owned, municipally owned, neighborhood, BMP, whatever that term is, um, because there are gonna be private ones. Um, there may be private ones that are collective, as we've talked about some areas um, with some of these zoning districts where we've got commonly owned facilities that share common ground outside of those. There could be a BMP that's commonly shared privately, um, but would be different than a publicly owned one. So I hope that's clear to hmm. you guys. As mud. Okay. I just I just don't want us to categorize all yep. BMPs as, as the same. Would I you guys agree with that? Your, you know, simple ones. Yeah. You understand what he's saying? You're gonna have to write the language. I think it's just a matter of adding the term public, kind of like what we did for recreational facilities. Yep. Whether it's public, municipal, neighborhood. Yep. And then we'll add the NRC sure. as well. Okay. I believe that takes care of item number 10. Item number 11, swapping setbacks. So this language, there was a, a minor change to it. Last time, I think it read, may, they may reduce it 15 feet, and now this is to no less than 10 feet. So they could, if they wanted to just reduce it five, they they wouldn't have to take the whole thing, then they can redistribute. So that hopefully this language works. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on this? So we're good? Okay. This will also be scheduled for a public hearing in May. That's a lot of public hearings. There are a, there are a couple of ones we talked about a few months ago that will be coming, so you'll have a meeting that probably has five or six public hearings coming up. Awesome. All right, item number 12, neighborhood business district owner occupied dwelling unit clarification. It was. I got through it though. So, brief memo in there a developer builder that is looking at the NB district, and there are other districts that use the owner occupied language. Just for clarification purposes, did you intend that to be the owner of the property living in the dwelling? the owner of the business located on the property if it's different or would it apply to both? So who, who are, do, are you referring to as the owner? Is it just the owner of the property? Can it be the owner of the business on the property that is a tenant? Or 
one, the other, both. To me, it was the owner of the property. That's how I. Wouldn't the intended use of any owner occupied in any district be to get the person who owns the business that's operating in that district the opportunity to live in that same facility? So, correct me if I'm wrong. The, the gist of the question here is, is it the owner of the property or the owner of the business? Because it could be a property owner that leases it out to a business, correct? Yes, correct. So I could own the property, live in there, and someone else could lease the business portion of the property. Potentially. If that's how you want it to be. I think it should be the person running the business. I think it's conflicting to have an owner and a business operator with just like a curtain between them. I mean, I don't see how that's going to work. But it should be up to the owner to decide what he wants to do. But I, I see some conflict there. That's why we wanted to ask. Yeah. I can tell you that what I know, thought of when we discussed this was the owner of the business dwelling because that's what, in my mind, fit into the neighborhood business of an owner. Well, yes. Had property and lived there and then operated the business kind of in conjunction. So that's what I was thinking. Because we've talked about this in other zones, allowing somebody who runs a business to be able to live in the same place they work. You can go name specific businesses, I guess. Back in the day, it used to be mortuary and gas station attendants and whatever. But um. most, I mean, how I looked at it was the owner of the property would also be the owner of the business. That's how I understood this would happen. Yep. That's what I understood as well. Okay. What if somebody else owns the property, but the owner of the business wants to live in the property that was created? I think the owner of the property is the one that should decide. He owns it. And if he wants to rent it out Could with the she, understanding, or you know, she, yeah, there you go. with the understanding that uh, they're going to be living in it, then the tenant has to take that into consideration if they're going to rent it. But I agree with Rob. It, it should be an owner-occupied business that they run themselves. Okay. So do you want it to be the person who owns the business to live in the property? If that is different than the person who owns the property. So as an example, say I buy a piece of property, it's NB, we put up a building, and I, I own the land, build a building, and lease it to Paul. So Congratulations, Paul runs Paul. the business. It, do you want me living above it? Or would you want Paul to be the person that lives with his business? Or doesn't it matter? I guess if you go like, if you speak it like that, I'd want Paul living there instead of you. The person running the business right. should be yes. living with yes. the business. That's that's my preference. Um, in my my, and this is just my opinion, is what we're trying to do is allow new business development. You know, some people can't afford to own and make payments on a home and own and make payments on a business. Correct. And so the intent here would be to allow that person to kind of make payments on both. Plus, if there are issues, that homeowner is there and not someone that just says, hey, it's not my business, I don't have control of it, sorry. So. And one thing I'd, I definitely wouldn't want to see the danger, I think, in the owner, like, I don't know if that's what's written, in the owner being able to decide, is we, I certainly didn't want there to be a de facto apartment above a business that's separate and that's so yeah it should definitely be tied to the person that operates the business in my opinion so so the business and the living unit should be tied together yes 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 does that help yep 
Okay. Do we need to declare that in the ordinance? Uh, if you want to, that or we have this on re recording and we can, that clears up the... There you go. That's it. If it becomes an issue in the future, we can certainly clear it up. But we will make a, a note and Melissa will have it, Paul will have it, I'll have it. So hopefully we operate accordingly. All right, so last but not least, item number 13, this recognition of something. As we talked about, Chuck Parsons has been on the Planning and Zoning Commission since they put the first street into the city of Brandon back in 1937. <laughs> he was there then when cars started roaming around. It's been, it's been a while. But um, we would like to thank Chuck for his service, not only, well, me personally, I would like to thank Chuck for his service, not only the Planning and Zoning Commission, but for everything that he's been involved with in the city of Brandon. I've been lucky enough to serve on several boards with him over time. I've served here, the Planning and Zoning. We sat next to each other on city council. We've served together on the Development Foundation, on the Brandon Revolving Loan Fund. Um, Chuck has also been involved with the Chamber. Um, needless to say, Chuck has put in a lot of time and a lot of hours into the city of Brandon in multiple facets. And for that, Charlie, we would like to say thank you. And we're even going to give you this fancy little paper certificate because we didn't think to order, you know, a wood one in time because that would have taken too long. It's coming. It is coming. Too. A wood one. Eagles carved in it and all kinds of, like gavel. the First National Bank eagle and a gavel. a gavel. Yeah. I will, while well, you were chairman, you should get a gavel. So, it. Chuck, I would like to present this certificate to you. I Thank won't you. make you stand up. Slams? Well, we don't, yeah, you know, laminate it in a sleeve, so it's fancy. <laughs> that means that you can write on it if it you want. Too. It is? Yeah. yeah, it says Chuck. Yeah. It doesn't say Charlie. Oh, so it's misspelled a little bit, but. Thank you. Chuck. Thank you very much. I will miss you, unfortunately. You know where I live. I, uh, yeah, I do know where you live. So anyway, thank you very much. We appreciate it. I would like to give you a round of applause. <laughs> and with that, Charlie, would you like to make a motion to adjourn? Sure. One comment first. Oh, so no. It's not necessarily on this. So on, on the city's website, if anyone is interested in sitting in Chuck, Chuck's chair when he is gone, there is, you can, there's an expression of interest form on the website you can fill out and submit it. We have received a couple so far, but if you are interested in serving on planning and zoning, there is an opportunity. Although Chuck did say he's taking the chair when he leaves, so you You'd might like have to, to bring your own. like to sit on the floor in Chuck's space. <laughs> we'll get you a milk crate or something to sit on. Take your nameplate <laughs> home. Take your nameplate home, but keep it, because you never know when you. I mean, I've got two of them at home. do you? I when I went off planning and zoning before, I kept mine, and then when I came back on, I had it still. Yeah, I brought it back. Chuck's not. Yeah. Chuck's not coming back. Make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Motion is second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned at 743.